Deku shot wanting that jungle at nice and early. Yeah, Zin, priority, interesting to see. Uh, haven't seen it out of Anonymous yet, but uh, maybe just something that Husha wants, <laughs> you know. <laughs> Want something a little bit more stable, a bit more normal in the meta after the Graves in the previous game. Um, Zin is a very powerful pick, so no surprise to see it there. But it does, as I was about to say, leave up the MF, uh, which is seemingly the highest priority, or one of the highest priority champions. Yeah, I think uh, she's one of the few 100% presence champions so far in Worlds. Obviously, not a huge sample size, but... Uh we start to get through a pretty decent number of games. Eight games a day gives you a pretty high sample size, yeah. even though you know, you're know you not ultimately playing that many games over the course of an entire tournament. But MF has definitely been a staple. Is going to be picked up here. And there's Lee Sin. Looks like nice and cozy there for Ananasik. Yep, there you go. Uh, that is one of his signature champions, Lee Sin. Great playmaker. So in for a treat potentially here. And uh, on the point about the, the AD carry and stuff, this is a lot of Doggo focus with the double bands as well as the, the MF takeaway. The Ezreal is still up and Doggo's Ezreal is clean. Do not get me wrong, but I, I feel like it's sometimes hard to make things happen around the Ezreal. It, uh, a lot of the times you're then sending your support out to go do other things. Right. And, you know, for such a key factor in Beyond Success to kind of be on weak side Q farm duty potentially is is a little tough. Even if later in the game there's a ton of carry potential. I mean, we saw Deft hard carry some games yep. uh, on the, it as well. I mean, even in the last game, right? Zven looking pretty comfy on it. True. Definitely his only early game though was to, like don't die and let uh, Vulcan roam. So I'm imagining Kino here in the Rakan is going to be similarly unlocked, which is good. It's just can you survive the. You know, the <laughs> Elongate the 2v1 potentially. Well, I was just thinking too, like, I wonder if Kino after the last game was like, give me a champion with some self peel. Like, I need to be able I to. Need to yeah, I need mobility. I played a move. They just hard targeted me. I played Gray Screen Simulator last game. I want to not do that. And also, Silas is making another appearance there for No Man's. It's been a pretty popular pick so far. See how No Man's looks on it. Of course, we know how critical he is to the UOL success in general. Definitely a veteran of uh, the international and, and definitely the playing stage. UOL have been here a number of times, one of the most experienced teams and no man's no exception here. In fact, this whole top side really has been a staple of Unicorns of Love for a long time now. Uh, but unfortunately, no Mumu to kind of get away with one yeah, with the Silas, <laughs> uh, but still some, some decent ults to steal. Silas often is not, you know, uh, denied of targets. There's almost always one or two ults. Yeah, happy to Rakan, have. great for helping you get some in there and a little bit of extra CC and all this stuff. So we'll see if they are able to grab a couple more good ones. Um, and taking it blind, you know, strong enough in the current meta, you, you can probably get away with it. And plus, you can target ban some of those counter picks that you don't want to play against. Like last game, we saw Mawen play the Yone. So this is one of those data points that I was saying it's good to be able to get before you have to play against them. You say, okay, well, the Silas looked really good into them. We'll take Silas and we'll ban the thing that they played into it. Yeah, I like the Yone, but uh, as you said, won't be available here. As uh, Amumu actually banned away, wanting to respect uh, giving Amumu MF over. That has been the most typical combination. Uh, even though, again, Amumu is, I'm um, sorry to report, 0 and 4. I knew, so I knew you were going to bring it up. I was like, am I going to bring it up? Are you going to bring it up? We were looking at each other like, who wants to, who wants to deliver those Dude, He's news. a sad boy, and he, yeah. he's like, I'm finally back on the international stage. I'm finally relevant again. Talk about Bagel Club, put Amumu in that Bagel Club team. Yeah, he's, uh, he's the president right now. <laughs> he's the leader of the Bagel Club. Yeah, we choose the hands up for once. Uh, it's eating pretty those good. zeros. <laughs> oh, Lord. Ari as well banned away. Definitely a no man's champ, but uh, one that basically every mid laner is comfortable with. And I think in this kind of game, especially peeling away a comfort pick isn't too bad. Gally also getting banned away as a potential support option there for Santas. But the pick is Nautilus by the looks of things. Do need to lock down the Rakan. Leona also an option, but I think either of these would make a lot of sense. Yeah, and it helps with your pushing power too. I mean, if you can rip tide the wave, land an E on it with the MF, I mean, you, you can get some push pretty quickly. Um, the Jax blind would be surprising. I see. I'm here for it. We'll see if he does want to lock it in here. Leong has played a pretty widespread of champions so far here in playing, but it is Syndra instead there locked in. Still have opportunity for Jack's blind, don't worry. Uh, but Leong nah. maybe wants something a little more stable. Yeah, I, w I would probably not want to see it yeah. right out the gate. It feels like a, a pretty big call out. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. Um, Jace as well, though, similarly uh, trying to play a pretty aggressive style. And I think, you know, that is kind of the identity that Leong brings uh, through Summer Split. You know, six games Camille, four games Gwen, four games Jace. A lot of aggressive champions, a lot of carry focus. Um, and just a little bit safer of an option than the Jax. But it helps, you know give you a power point on the map. The Syndra as well gives you a very strong top side. Decent damage spread as well between those two soul laners. So uh, we'll have to see what boss can break out to match this. I think when you're, uh, when you're drafting as well, you definitely need power in your soul lane. So I do like that uh, Beyond's approach to this in general. 
Last picked up Unicorns of Love is Wukong. Going to be the Ooh. counter pick there at ETJs. Definitely not uh, a fun time in the early levels, which is basically true of any Jace matchup, but uh, once you get things going, once you hit level six, it can be a bad time there for Jace. I mean, anyone who watched the LCS during the yeah. remote broadcast <laughs> should know how much of a Wukong fan that I am. Uh, I took every opportunity I could to replace my face cam with a picture of Wukong. <laughs> so I'm, I'm stoked to see Boss break it out. I, I think the champ is so good into uh, Jace, you know, despite some of the nerfs that come in since the height of his power. And, you know, we're talking about the power point that Leon's going to bring with the Jace. That's, like you said, true for a couple levels, and then suddenly, Anonymous is going to have a great lane to try and make plays through it. It's a very easy setup. The Silas as well can potentially roam up there, um, and that, that's a potential place that they can go to, given that they have that, uh, you know, it's kind of tough probably to make plays against the, the Ezreal on the bot side. Yeah, in general, it feels like this is going to be a uh, top side game for both these teams. Unicorns of Love almost always wants to enable No Man's, although No Man's job might be enable his top lane in this particular game. Silas typically most happy when he's in the river. I uh, haven't seen the full commitment yet to the River Silas, but uh, the more times you can get out of lane, the better. Actually, I guess Perk's joked about it. Said yeah. he played River Silas in their first game. <laughs> yeah, I think No Man's is someone who I, I want to see step up a little bit. Like you said about how familiar some of these names are to us, he has been a staple of play-ins and, and minor regions and one of the best mid laners, but not super impressive so far during this play-ins. Uh, the first game where he was the Orianna, I think that was the first one, but the Orianna game where he was really greedy with his flash, he was dying to just not respecting his opponents and, and getting caught in side lanes and stuff it was it was a bit of a problem and something that i think you has struggled with a little bit even domestically uh when the playoffs came around and they were struggling to, through the entire bracket taking a lot of five game series was just getting caught out in map situations and not respecting where the enemy could be or if teleports were up and stuff and i think that's what they need to clean up the most in helping no man's get unlocked to make his own plays yeah and definitely have to be careful here because you have not only a syndra and a zinza to maybe contend with but very likely if things are going well kino is going to be in your lane sometimes as well so Gonna have to be respectful there on the Silas. We'll see what happens as both teams have charged out at level one. And unfortunately, not met anything there. Unicorns of Love were trying something on the top side, but I believe Leung spotted what's going on, cut the board down into the top lane. So uh, everything just dissipates, but a good try. Always love to see the teams go for level one, especially when you have something as straightforward as a Nautilus. Silas also excellent at level one as well. So we're keeping it simple here for Unicorns of Love, but not over committing, of course. And I feel like. The thing I'll want to see is exactly what Husha can do in the early game with the should-be pressure in both solo lanes to start out. Uh, this is the case in the last game against C9, and he got caught out of position on a Krug invade. And so I don't want him to lose that aggressive mindset. I feel like that's sometimes people overcorrect, um, and they don't go for what their comp should be doing in the early game. And I, I hope to see him still making those kinds of plays, just coordinating a little bit better around those solo lanes. Well, no man's big chilling right now. Doesn't want to face check the Syndra, makes sense. Not much for you to do, range versus melee. So might as well sit around, wait for the minions to get a bit weaker. 2v2 here should be interesting. Definitely have to tip the hat to Unicorns of Love. Ooh, it's the ruined MF. Ooh, lore. <laughs> so fancy. Also have exhaust and ignite there in the bottom side. Kind of down for the exhaust here for MF, because again, like, so much of her problem is when people jump on top of her, so. A little bit uh, easier for you to deflect people if Jace or Zinzel perhaps are getting on top of you. And also just good in like, even in a 2v2, if you're looking to chase somebody down, shoot them in the back, double them up. Yeah, it is interesting. It. I'm I'm trying to wrap my head around it a little bit because there's not that much dive on the side of Beyond Gaming. You have Zin, who's yep. probably realistically. Ezreal's going to be hitting you from afar. Jace, Shock Blast. You know, Sin just a pretty low commitment champion to get a burst out. So... How often are you going to be really in range? Because my concern is being at half health and then insta-killed, not 100 to 0, which is where the exhaust would make the most sense. So a little unsure of how I, I feel about that when I want to see it play out a little bit more, but not loving it and my initial impression. And like you said, topside, the Wukong counterpick takes a little bit to turn on. Uh, it's definitely not like a, I'm going to turbo stomp you in lane. It is, I get pushed in the first couple of levels, um, but my passive enables me to eventually, when I hit three, be able to start trading against you, even the lane out a little bit. And then at six, I get kill threat once I unlock my ultimate. And I also give you really good playing making around me. So if you have TFs or uh, Lee Sins and things and Silas's that can get out of lane and come topside, you suddenly have someone who you can pick on quite hard. Lovely little stun there from Syndra in the mid lane, but looks like Husha was just protecting the Syndra in case uh, somebody wanted to come visit. That would, of course, be Ananasik, as we do have uh, a little dial in here from the Verizon 5G all chat. From, uh, oh, what's our duo name? 
I'll be honest. I'm not a very good name, like creative nickname person. That mm -hmm. my name is Mark Z. It's my it's my goddamn name. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> I'm, not, I'm not the one to answer that question. Sorry, friend. All right. You know what? I'll have a think on it here. It looks like trouble in bottom side here for Misfortune getting ignited, but is not dead. Gonna be all right there, but uh, looking a little tricksy. There nice in the two v one. Yeah, nice though to get that chunk out early on. I mean, we talked about. You know, being weak side for Doggo and Kino, but I mean, if you're able to do that, start getting priority in the lane, uh, you can actually force a couple plays. Uh, the MF is immobile. She does have the exhaust, so maybe it'll make it more difficult, but sometimes I think I'd rather have the heal to dodge Sindra's skill shots and stuff. So we'll have to see. I can only imagine how angry Kino is after, you know, the uh, the Mumu game. We have to endure Ooh. beating after beating from Cloud9, as uh, Ananasic did successfully steal the large Raptor. And will not be punished for it. Just walks away there with a little bit of coverage out of Nomads. Top side, boss. Getting smacked around. Conqueror proc and Leong feeling good in the extended trade. So boss will not recommit. Yep. Uh, going to drop off there. Looks like he wants to get a little, a couple wards. I mean, luckily they just saw the Lee Sin, but, or excuse me, they just saw the, the Zin punishing the Lee Sin. So he knows that the dive's not coming in quite yet, but that is still something you have to be concerned of. Instead, Husha looking to the bot side to punish. Misfortune looking like a decent target. Exhausto up and available. Who is it going to be? Kino dives in, and that is going to be Misfortune flashing to her death. It's first blood for Doggo. Love to see it there for Beyond as uh, the tower shot does happen, and now the redub is indeed coming through. Who shall low the heal, though, is going to uh -oh. save him. Doggo uh -oh. trying to tank it up, and it looks a little bit disastrous as oh, no, one hit will fall <laughs> under the tower. And that execution <laughs> is not even a real kill. So now it's No Man's trying to get them on the board here as Doggo is going to be the target, but Kino running into Experience. Husha flashing, Kino out of there, and they've done it beyond gaming. 1 0. Don't forget anything else that happened. Don't worry about it. Close your eyes and the scoreboard. Clean. <laughs> clean, clean bot dive from beyond there. Oh boy. Uh, a lot of things to break down there. Um, not saying that the heal would have made the difference, but one of the things that uh, exhaust doesn't help a ton with is okay guy goes in and grabs turn aggro I exhaust him great makes it a little bit harder for him to get out maybe but there's three other targets hitting me and exhaust doesn't do anything to those people uh, so you still see Argonaut getting dropped there the redive Santos did a good job nice footwork work also had his shield um, as you'll see here uh, Husha starts this one off goes in right away and then the exhaust goes right down top of him it's actually uh, Kino who grabbed turn aggro first good job of juggling that to get the initial kill and stay healthy enough for the redive all things considered the initial phase of this dive went very well it's only on the redive that things get a little loosey-goosey where here it's really a moment to finish this kill off everyone else is kind of low maybe Kino could have stayed in a little bit more but misses the Q you know the auto attacks aren't enough to break the shield the extra shield from Anana sick coming in making sure Santa stays alive the only problem is no one tagged him <laughs> so, needed an E there from Anana sick or something. I, didn't, I don't know if, it, if it, I, he just assumed someone else already tagged him, or I, I'm not quite sure, but uh, you know, was happy to just get the shield off. And so what could have been a nice turnaround for UOL actually doesn't give them any gold. Yeah, actually, and because the roam happened as well from Nomads, you don't even get like, necessarily a CS lead or you get some turret plates in mid lane or anything. Yeah, instead it's one kill and actually a very big early lead. 1,200 gold is a lot at seven minutes in the game. And that is the current lead that Beyond's have. Yeah, and it, you know, it's also the, the CS lead in the top side that the Jace is just naturally going to accrue through the laning phase. The fact that the junglers have been seen for so long and there's been so much action on the bot side is actually great for the Jace to just keep that push up. Um, you know, like we said, it takes a little bit for that threat to come in. And now that there's so many cooldowns kind of burn, the Jace doesn't, or the, excuse me, the Lee Sin doesn't have his flash and stuff, it, it makes the Jace feel a little safer, even though he's not really involved in any of these plays going down. Alrighty, well, see how it develops, but uh, they apparently did not like our suggestion of playing the weak side 2v2. Doggo and Kino are all in on getting aggressive here in this lane, which I'm very happy about. Doggo playing up nice and far forward. Definitely the uh, the lesser seen mode of Ezreal, but still one you can play if you have well, an initiative in the lane. Yeah, I feel like this is how you should play League, is you have to be adaptable to what's happening in the game. And, and Jace is totally happy with extended, uninteractive laning phases where he just gets CS lead. So if your bot lane is forcing summoners on their own and setting up dives, like, great. Flip that a little bit. You know, as long as you can protect Leong from the dives and you just let him get the push when he can, like, you know, you're fine snowballing uh, Doggo, who, by the way, like we said, the carry for Beyond Gaming over the course of their season. All right, well, Ananasik is spotted. Nice little vision ward there. I'll control it, I should say. Spotting that least in, so that will delay any potential dive. Looks like Moan's going to go ahead and clean up this blue buff. Does get donated over. No steal incoming as Unicorns of Love are actually sending uh, almost everyone here to the top side of the map. Perhaps it's Rift Tail time. Indeed it is. Ananasik is going to go ahead and start that up. Uh, see if Beyond want to contest. They have basically everyone, and Ezreal's making his way up. We'll see if he can make it there in time. 
Young here as well can maybe get some poke happening over the wall. Only tags boss. And uh, ooh, they're actually trying to pick off the level 6 MF here. That's a pretty good target. Nice. Great stun there out of the Syndra. Ulti oh. up and exhaust is good, but it's not enough as Husha gets the kill anyway. And now actually the Herald, maybe still something they can take. Yeah, Ananasic does have smite, but this Herald's not that low. They tag the over the second time, and somehow Husha steals it. It's an absolute tragedy right now for Unicorns of Love as Ananasic is going to pay the extra price going down as well. Well, it's a disaster so far. They leashed the <laughs> Rift Herald for Beyond Gaming. Argonaut gets picked off in the rotation over there the uh you know exhaust looking good for a second they're keeping it alive in the 1v1 but again the problem is this is not a 1v1 game and you have husha realizing hey i have a target here i can finish before retargeting onto the the rift herald and so uh you know this exhaust starting to look a little uh sussy baka to me yeah it's one thing <laughs> to get caught in transition like that i mean that's just not a place that man can stand and unfortunately stood in the wrong place and got killed for it but losing the rift herald on top of that's a real punishment because at least if two people appealed off to kill your ad surely you get the rift herald mark c instead it is the worst of both worlds which you hate to see here is again exhaust uh, only chasing safety for a little bit now, here. am i picking on the exhaust a little bit maybe like this heal save you there without your flash maybe not still yeah. but uh you know it, it is a tough position just not having any vision in the river to know if you're safe to rotate over and i don't even know if i feel confident blaming argonaut just for that because it could be the rest of yoel being like hey come over here and it's like well i'm mf i need to be behind my front line to shoot bullet time and so he's trying to get up there to support his team in that play without having proper vision control set up and so he doesn't know what he's walking through um you know you probably could have known that Sindra isn't seen elsewhere she's a mid laner probably in the river somewhere but you know it's tough when you have so many of these things you're trying to juggle and so Argonaut gets picked off and then the four man doesn't complete their job of getting the Rift Herald and like you said with the CS leads that are already going on the Rift Herald now in their pocket Beyond Gaming is looking like they are in a very strong position. Yeah this lead's absurd actually ten and a half minutes through and they're three thousand gold ahead and that is probably not getting any better I mean there's not even that many plates being taken it's actually only two Zero in mid and one apiece in top and bot. So there is a ton of extra gold to cash in for with this Rift Herald that Husha stole away. There is the continued CS leads that they can build. There is maybe more uh, pressure that can be applied as Husha is actually going for the maximum here, trying to gank boss here alongside Leong. Ananasic is in the area, so it will be a 2v2 if it develops. But uh, if this goes bad for Unicorns of Love, this gold lead is just going to spiral completely out of control. Yeah, I kind of like this read by, by Husha, even though they haven't done it yet. I think that was more of a counter gank opportunity than trying to make his own play. Plus, he has the Rift Herald up there. Uh, so they were trying to bait that. Doesn't quite work around. And then they spot Lee on that pink ward, so they knew he was up there. Starting to get a little prolonged with this play. Either you got to get the push so you can get the Rift Herald off, or you got to go somewhere else at this point. Kino actually fainting to the top side should give you the room you need to push this in. Leon Lo just has to kind of hit the minions a little bit harder. He didn't have a form there, you know, hammering away, but he's going to finally get it up. Push is going to reveal himself, and Kino is actually going to take the recall, which I do like, although surveillance system is not going to spot Silas rooming up to the top side, but looks like a ward spotted them instead. So they're going to have to back away here after taking a decent chunk of plates off. So not the whole tower that they might have wanted with Kino being up there, but good enough, I think, for the first Rift Herald. The nice thing is, too, with all that pressure that you're putting down the top side is you're getting a 1v1 for Doggo in the bot lane. And so I just saw him on the mid-map shift forward aggressively onto Argonaut there, gets a good trade. Argonaut tries to answer back with the ultimate, but I have a much shorter cooldown on my E than you have on your bullet time. And I expect Doggo to keep trying to make uh, these kinds of plays, though. Dragon is now the focus. Yeah, typically, you know, Ezreal, not that hot in a 1v1. MF is actually pretty good. Uh, in any sort of AD carry duel. Uh, the difference being that you're 30 CS behind and the enemy has Divine Sunder finished already, which doesn't really matter what's happening there. I swear to God, if Doggo had stolen that dragon. Oh God, not so you just throw his keyboard out the window. What's the point? Uh, you know, for the flip side, Beyond just says, we don't really care about you getting a Mountain Dragon when our Jace is snowballing up 30 CS. Like you already said about the bot lane, same situation. Uh, I think it's the right decision. You know, if, if you all want to commit the resources to grab a, a Mountain Dragon, go for it. We'll keep the gold lead. Santa's actually trying to freeze that wave in the face of Doggo is pretty bold, but looks like he's getting away with it for now, although eating a little bit of poke, and I think that wave has finally made its way to the turret. Indeed it has. Who should also be busy clearing out this vision here, making sure they can retake all these different areas and have all the mobility for their Syndra. Moen's actually been pretty active so far, and uh, they do want to try and lean down here for Doggo now that Liang has taken out the top lane outer tower. Definitely want to try and get a few more plates if they can in the next 30 seconds, but more than anything, just, you know, you're opening up the map, start moving your pieces around and maximizing your farm.
yeah, good job by Beyond trying to get some pressure down the bot lane there. Didn't end up turning into a kill, but you, you did all the right steps. You cleared vision in the river. You half rotated Moan down. You, you read the situation. Haven't landed enough pre, pre poke from the Ezreal. Call the dive off. I mean, these are the kinds of plays I really like to watch teams try and make. It's these like half plays, these half roams, half decisions where you're option selecting. Yep. Like, okay, we didn't land the poke. Let's go back and we'll go back to normal laning. If you land the poke, great. You actually move the, the rest of your team down and you force that dive. So far, so good. And again, that gold lead still ticking up. 4,000 gold ahead now for Beyond Gaming. See just how big of a lead they can build here as uh, second Rift Herald is going to be available in a little bit. But not just yet. Might be good for another tower here. Although I think Beyond Gaming are pretty happy with the pace of this game. No need to, you know, put your foot completely down on the gas and just go for broke. Because they feel very far in control of this game. I mean, Moen's casually taking the blue buff, who's just farming up a storm. Doggo's throwing cues at everything that moves. It's just a good time. Yeah, and honestly, it's it's not like you really get outscaled either. I don't... I mean, you're already 4,000 gold up, so yeah. you're in a great spot. But it's also not like, a, oh my god, we got to keep the gas down. How do we get this mid turret? How do we get bot turret broken open? You know, like, your team comp still plays pretty well throughout the mid to late game. I think, you know, you could argue UOL does scale maybe a little bit harder in 5v5s um, with some of the, the tools that Wukong might have and the MF might have in, in, in terms of pure straight-to-back, front-to-back front back 5v5. But... 4,000 gold lead and a pretty solid team comp yourself, you know, like you can actually play this one out relatively slowly. I would not want to see them lose this one. Uh, I mean, they are saying bot lane again, keeping Doggo down there. So another trade by Beyond, but this one I feel like, okay, you're actually giving them something, whereas the, the Mountain Dragon's a little bit easier to defend. Yeah, this Herald uh, definitely nice uh, as it represents a potential future investment of gold on the tower. And of course that opening up the map view definitely gives you a lot more space to play with. Kino is going to find boss here. But Wukong is pretty threatening to the level 7 Rakan, and Doggo is a little low on mana, so doesn't really feel like dueling even in the 2v1. Maybe suspect someone else is coming along. We know that's not the case, but Doggo is going to play jungle here instead, which is a much better prize. The blue buff, always something you want on Ezreal if you can afford to give it over. I feel a little bad for Boss here. Uh, the counter pick largely went how you think the early laning phase should go. Maybe fell a little bit further behind than you'd want, but there was a disaster kind of going on in the bot lane in some of the other parts of the map. And so you can't get the jungler attention that you picked this champion for. If you're not going to play around the Wukong with your Lee Sin, it's not really going to do that much. I think Beyond did have some good windows where you saw Husha, you know, camping topside in case that gank did come through. I think Beyond did a good job trying to play around that, but it's just unfortunate for boss now. You have your items completed, and that's the one nice thing, is that Wukong is not just a lane counter. He is very good through all portions of the game. It is a fairly physical, damage-heavy team comp, and when Wukong gets his ult up, he gets so many stacks so quickly. The regen that comes through, the, the actu actual armor that you get from that passive will make it pretty annoying for the rest of Beyond to try and kill him, uh, but luckily, Beyond has a ton of extra gold. Yeah, and Doggo is about to Take that gold investment and run with it here. He's very close to transforming this Muramana. Does have the blue buff ticking away. He's trying to get that poke happening. He's going to sit mid now for uh, about as long as he needs to to take out this tower unless his team demands he come over for an objective. But again, Baron not a thing for a few minutes. Not something you want to take at 20 anyway. Not really caring too much about the Dragon Beyond. have definitely favored the farm and the towers right now because they want to keep that gold lead nice and high. And uh, Doggo is obviously, you know, public enemy number one here for Unicorns of Love, but pretty tough to kill the Sergio with his team behind him. And uh, Boss actually going to get spotted on the flank. Again, nice surveillance here for Beyond Gaming, kind of keeping their lead intact with, you know, good fundamentals and good vision control. Yeah, double pink wards in both the side lane brushes uh, around mid so that they can't find a flank opportunity. Boss is trying his best now around the Raptor pit, um, but it's really hard to find an angle. Here's No Man's, though. No Man's maybe is the one to make it happen. Bullet time already go down, but Argonaut getting absolutely ripped to pieces by the poke under that tower. And No Man's going to get spotted, so Beyond Gaming just going to rotate down. And you know what? There is a Dragon to take, but I think they're much happier trying to keep sieging this mid tower, because what do Unicorns of Love have here? They don't have anything after the, the bolt time went down. They were trying to land some pre-fight poke with the bolt time as well as clear the wave, and then you have the flanks come in from the pincer move, but it just kind of fell apart because the vision control was so good, it was so telegraphed.
Oh, this is a, maybe a bit of a pinch here, but Don Gaming are going to keep sticking together. Harold dropped in the mid lane here to try and get some counter play, but Beyond Gaming actually fancy Ananasic as their target here as Boss continues to eat poke to the face. Cinder stuns very nice there. Boss going to get an elite shot, but Doggo getting out of dodge there. Hoosha diving in, and now it's a 2v3 in the back line, and they're just getting decimated by Unicorns alone, but they will trade it back and forth there as Moan is going to fall on the other side. Argonaut still alive for a little while longer, lives to tell the tale, but Doggo Ooh. flashes in for the max range. Q and he wants blood. Nomad's gonna be the next one on the chopping oh block God. and reads every single juke for the triple kill. Doggo's skill shot accuracy on this Ezreal man. He's got aimbot unlocked, chasing down the kills there after a pretty scrappy fight. Uh, UOL did make that a little bit closer than I thought they'd be able to, given how the fight started with how much pre-fight poke there was, as well as how far they are behind in the game. And you can see the potential of their comp, but Doggo's too clean. That was really slick. Even gonna take the dragon at the end of it as well. As Doggo, that's ah, such it again. Count the cues, the favorite game to play with Ezreal on replays. Uh, we'll have to see how many does land. Kino there, going on to Anonisic, draws a lot of attention. Uh, and despite the fact that they get a lot of poke onto boss, makes it uh, look like it's going to be an easy win for Beyond Gaming. But you can see the Wukong's power there, working in, finding these knockups, hitting people, Silas as well, stealing these ultimates. Um, I got distracted from watching my own gameplay. Uh, but <laughs> at least towards the end of the fight, I didn't see Doggo miss anything. This one here, I mean, just, ooh. I love uh, that. And even before that fight, like, on the top side of the map when they were sieging a while ago, ooh. <laughs> that's what you need to know about that replay. He's, that, that's a goddamn bad as real clean, <laughs> struggling. Um, but yeah, Doggo was doing a really good job even before that, landing poke too, on the MF and stuff like that. So he, he's looking real good right now. Yeah, I get why they keep picking him the champion, I guess, you know? Uh, Especially Doggo. if the enemy's going to throw three bands at him and that's what you're getting out of it, you know, that is, is a... a Big threat for teams to go that forward is in this. An absurd, oh my god. I was like, is that CSD real? That can't be real. And uh, it is real. Plus 72. That graphic showed. And it's keep it's live, so it keeps getting updated. 225 CS at 20 minutes. Mm -hmm. This is like the old school numbers mid laners used to get when they were doing the Wraith Camp farming. Mm -hmm. You remember that crap where they'd steal all your junglers yep. and go to the other guys? That is some insane numbers for an Ezreal. All right, well, Syndra, how do you get out of this one? In a 1v3, soon to be a 1v4, Santa's the target. Is gonna get killed. Leung swoops in to get it. Now Kino looking to line them up as Doggo finds Boss with a bit of the true shot barrage. Not enough to get the kill just yet, but Husha is closing the trap. No man so on the wraparound is trying to make it happen. Leung gets one, but he gets traded back and forth. Now the full time is gonna zone out the rest of Beyond Gaming, and they don't have it just yet, but Unicorns of Love need to leave the scene of the crime now, and that is uh, easier said than done. Boss is low. Argonaut is just about dead. As Wim becomes Lightning, we'll finish off the tail end of that kill, and Doggo going to pick up the Silas here as Boss is the only one left alive. And thankfully, Wukong will live to tell the tale how four of his team dove and died. A good attempt by Unicorns of Love to stay active in the game. And you ask how Moan gets out of this situation. He gets out in a body bag. <laughs> um, but the rest of Beyond Gaming were able to collapse quite nicely. And it looks like they're going to be able to grab the Baron on the back end of this. Santos is the only one in the area. No teleports. I guess Boss has his teleport up. If can get a ward down, maybe they can stop this, but... Doesn't look like they want to go for it. Yeah. Altless, flashless, nautless. Altless, flashless, Wukong being able to yeah. join in. Yeah, it doesn't mm. sound like a fight you win. Don't think so. So let's just win again. So, like I said, initially like to play, finding these kills, and Boss and Anonisic have some nice footwork here to make this a little bit more difficult. Um, and the only problem is it just takes too long. You know, here he's dodging the Husha, W over the wall. He's kind of doing a good job reading all this. The rest of you, Karns of Love, run through the turret to try and get them out. This is a nice zoning ultimate uh, from Argonaut to make sure that they can maybe get back to the turret. But Husha has a really clean re-engage here, uh, going for the Alt W to clear the path onto Boss, getting onto Argonaut as well. And while Boss does get out, it also splits um, no man's there to stay it's trapped under the turret. So nice job by Beyond Gaming reacting to that play, picking up all the kills in the Baron. And Doggo continues to get richer here in this game. 5 0 1, three items completed, stopwatch ready, and a Rebel Baron power play to top it all off. Beyond Gaming looking to put the finishing touches on this game by the looks of things. They are way too close to 10,000 gold ahead given the time <laughs> in this game. It's only 23 minutes or just under, but Beyond Gaming are. Uh, just unbelievably ahead in this game. And Boss is feeling the pain. The clone's getting shot. The real Wukong's getting shot. Doggo's terrorizing everyone. Doggo's a nightmare. Uh, he is super aggressive, taking blast cones over the wall behind oh. turrets, shifting forward. 
This man has too much confidence. And uh, four people in the mid lane is going to make sure he stays nice and safe. Leong is going to finish up to T2 in bottom lane as the mid one falls. And Anana Sick is on quite the adventure, uh, but is going to be spotted by just about every war in existence. He is on a safari mission. Unfortunately, he is now, uh, I guess, the prey. <laughs> Dead spotted by Husha briefly. Doggo dominating just delete Santas from the game. And oh my goodness, that true shot brought it a lot to Argonaut. And uh, Moan's busy fighting a couple, but not going to matter as he finishes off one and the others are going to get grabbed. And now Husha once again with the re-engage as everyone's been poked down low. And Doggo is continuing his reign of terror. Misses the Q finally on camera. And an Arsic with some nice footwork to get out alive. But unfortunately, the structures will not be so lucky. Nope, looking like it's going to be both mid and bot inhibitor here. We'll see if Beyond Gaming want to try and push for the end. They seem like the kind of team that would be down to scrap it out, especially if they can find another pickoff here. Um, they're super far ahead, looking like they're going to find their first win in group stage of play -ins. We wonder why we kept tearing. Oh, it's, the, it's Doggo's team. It's a Doggo-centric team. Finally kind of realizing some of that we saw when he was subbed in for PSG. Blast International, this lockup is nice. Though. Everfrost here. Out of the SARS to find two with the root, but not enough to get a kill as Doggo's going god like still shifting forward. There is boss finally slays one, gets Kino as Husha on the back end, takes out No Man's True Shot Barrage back up. Of course it is. It's been long enough here as Boss once again is gonna go back in onto the Zinzao, but that's not gonna be enough for a kill. Leung's gonna finish one up, Boss is gonna get finished up as well, and it is only MF left to die to Doggo, this time gonna escape. He decides he prefers creeps over killing MF. I am positive he just kind of like kept running at an angle. He could have come oh. whatever he gets both. <laughs> what am I saying? Doggo, of course, is going to get both. Finish Melee, the kill it's on. real. Shifting in, getting the ace. And now we're back for more. Santos is like, I don't know what round this is. I'm out of here. I don't think I like this experience. And Beyond Gaming are going to make sure it ends quickly, at least, as they will take down the Unicorns of Love to pick up their first win of Worlds 2021. They are on the board. It had to have been a difficult start to the day after their loss to Cloud9, but you can see the power of Beyond Gaming when they're in form. Doggo creating leads in the bot lane that the rest of the team capitalizes on. Leong winning his lane. Uh, the rest of the team playing around them well. Husha exploiting these advantages quite well himself, um, comboing well in the team fights. They're a pretty well-balanced team if they can find their footing in the early game. Yeah, definitely uh, more of what we expected, I suppose, and good to see them on the board. We'll have to see how the results shake out. They only have one game left to play. That is, of course, true for both these teams. Unfortunately, Unicorns of Love down but not out, but 0-3 cannot feel good.